day two coverage continues and we're at a place maybe you all didn't think we would be. We're at the Edge of Tech booth, but um, we got Will. You all might know him as Sir Will from Bamboo. We're here taking a look at the A1 Mini and yeah, you're like, Grant, why the hell are you here? As I've said before, I don't hate Bamboo. I just had bad luck personally. And I've never seen an A1 Mini in person. So when I saw it, you know I had to come by and Will and I have talked a little bit off air before and hey, that means we had to come over and say hi, put a face to the name, if you will. So first off, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, nice meeting you. But tell us about the A1 Mini and what's going on with this thing. So the A1 Mini is something we just came out with. It's geared towards beginners. Uh -huh. It comes out at a spectacular price point. Yeah. You can bring multicolor to a lot more people. It's literally 10 minutes, maybe 15 to set up out of the box. Yeah. Mostly assembled, you have to put on the cutter arm and take off a part, put on this tool holder, assemble the AMS with four screws, slip the sleeves on and you're, you're good to go. You're rolling. Yeah. Okay. We have a number of slice piles and you know, we even ship it with a little kit, a project kit. Yeah, I saw that. And that is something that new users will enjoy. Yeah. Getting to do an actual project like that. Absolutely. So again, That's good because you get like kind of off and printing right when you start. Absolutely. Yeah. Something to print, something of value sometimes too. I mean, a lamp, one of them is a lamp. I love lamp. I love lamp. So that's what we're offering. And and just because the first one in the A1 is a mini, doesn't mean that they all will be, but no, we're not gonna have an extra large printer in this, I'll tell you that. So as Dr. Tao said, that will come later, probably next year in a yet a new line, so. That's fair, that's fair. So. A lot of people want bigger bamboos. I think that's the biggest thing that I hear in the community. We want bigger, we want bigger because they're fast, most of them are reliable and sorry, had to. I know. Uh, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of adoption of bamboo printers by first time users that have never really touched a 3D printer. Bamboo is kind of moving into that commoditization market as we've talked about. And part of that with the A1 Mini is the new hot end that literally clips in and out. And there's a magnet on this one too. Yeah. Same style PTC heater, it looks like. But uh, it, it's on the, yeah, it's on the backside. Contact. Yep. The hardest part is taking the silicon sock off. Yeah, that's back the on. worst. You do a little buckle, take that off, do a little buckle. It drops right, you pull it right out, inserts in, buckle it, sock on. Yeah, two hands. Yeah. Um, and maybe, maybe a minute. But that's nice because I'm pretty sure everyone that's ever had to do a nozzle swap on a hot system has burned themselves at least once. You got a little PTSD from doing it. And while well, the E3D Revo does, of course, solve that problem, we'll card to our interview with E3D so you guys can take a view of that. But this is a different adoption method of it because it's an entire hot end. It's not just swapping a nozzle. Correct. And no wires. No wires. We have to worry about. It's just that's all behind the no scenes. No wires and more specifically, no connectors to break. <laughs> yes, there is that. No connectors to have to worry about. And yes, I've broken a connector. Yeah, yeah. We, we've all been there. But you know, it's kind of funny because of course I watched a lot of the A1 mini videos. The thing that I really liked was this because this is bloody brilliant. Funny story. My wife loved it too and she broke it. The string broke. I restrung it on one millimeter uh, steel wire. Nice. Now she won't break it. Well, see, this is really cool because this shows you all the available colors. Not just colors, but, but filaments too. We have ABS, we have PETG. Yeah. That's all in here. I, mean, I love it. This. I didn't even know we had a clear one. Well, you do now. And hey, speaking of being at the Edge of Tech booth, What's we got up? we got Jim here. Jim, how you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Jim nice is to see you, Grant. Jim's the voice of the event today. I, uh, Jim, tell the folks home about I, the uh, about the Edge of Edge of Tech. About the Edge of Tech. Uh, check out the Edge of Tech for 3D printing, CNC, and laser stuff. But mostly 3D printing and laser. But we're having some fun here. We're actually about to jump out and do some death races on the Death Racer, on the uh, the custom Death Racer there. Nice. Um, but of course, I mean, this is this is really the star of the show. The Will, A1 Mini. Will man. and the A1 Mini is yeah. the star of the show. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab my battery, which is underneath Will, and oh. I'll get out of your Oh, okay. All, All right. right, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, you're good. That means Jim gets in the video too. So see, now now I don't feel bad about commandeering the booth. <laughs> Anyways, guys, links to the Edge of Tech in that description down below. Thanks again, Jim, for bringing out that A1. This is Jim's A1, right? Yeah, this is his. It's a funny story. He reboxed this up yeah. and checked it on an airline to fly here. Oh, that is. Um... TSA opened up the boxes. And he was a little nervous when he found out and he opened them and he was a little nervous everything wouldn't be there, but it was. As so, you do, yeah. Yeah, so, but he literally took it apart and reboxed it exactly how it came to him. So, TSA, 3D printers, they're gonna be more common on airplanes now. Small, True. easy to transport. 
Yeah. You might find this by itself in check baggage, in carry-on baggage. The A1 Mini, and the thing about it is it prints just as fast as our other printers. Right. Those benches out you see on front there, 12 minutes. Yeah. And the quality on them? Pretty good. Hot. They look good. Yes, I know. Don't, don't hate us. What? We send you sour rotten printers, apparently. Hey, look, that's kind of the deal. See, while I am a little salty about the fact that I've had two lemons, what I can guarantee you is they don't send golden units to reviewers. So there's that. Because the first one I bought myself, we sent that one back. And that was the opportunity. If there was ever going to be a golden unit, that was going to be the one that was sent. Yeah. We, but it wasn't. We don't do that. That is something that, that I can appreciate. Now, I got the bad end of that stick. That's okay. Look, it happens. This is the thing, guys. You all see that I get upset about things because, yeah, I got $1,600 worth of paperweight sitting in my, uh, in my shop. But that's life sometimes. Not every printer is going to be perfect. And you have to recognize that eventually it comes down to you either try and you fail, you send it back, or you try and you succeed and you learn something. Heck, we were here on setup day and somebody's bamboo was acting up. I looked at it and said, oh, I know what the problem is. And I quickly fixed it. Because I've worked on them enough, I actually know how to fix them pretty well. Hey, there you go. You know, hey. I will say that um, we have improved our packing methods and materials. I will say that's something I've always been impressed with. From day one, I was impressed with the packaging on these machines. And even since day one, we have improved the packaging. Yeah. Heck, on the X1, the doors are now encased in plastic in case they shatter during shipping. You don't end up with broken glass all over the inside of your printer. Right. Okay. And we can replace just the door. Before, we had to replace the printer because we won't take the risk of you cutting your hand trying to clean the broken glass out of your printer. You're right. Yeah, that's fair. And that's totally fair. I will say um, Bamboo has made 3D printing something where I could see it in a home. It doesn't look like a traditional 3D printer. It looks like something that could sincerely sit in a living room, in a kitchen, in a dining room, somewhere in a house you wouldn't traditionally have a machine. Well, because it fits in. Well, if you look at this new printer, you look at the back of it, look at the power cord. It's merged in. It's mer- that's weird. You can't replace the power cord. Huh. Now- I do prefer that though. I I agree that the cord should be replaceable. Yeah. And that was I my do. first complaint about this one it was sent to me. Yeah. The other thing is, is like the AMS. We're only gonna ever have one on this. That's okay. It's molded in. You don't, you have one connection to worry about into the printer on the side. Yep. It really is a quick setup and it's really designed and marketed to be as close to a consumer device as you can. Yeah. The fact that we have our new maker world where I can take Bamboo Handy out, find a model that has a profile for whichever printer I have from Bamboo. Right. And send it to the printer from my phone. We slice it in the cloud and it sends to the printer. I've printed on my mini stuff that was already sliced, had profiles in the cloud. There was a model that wasn't, I downloaded it on my computer, made yep. a profile, printed it, and then updated that, loaded that profile up to our maker world. Now anybody else with a mini can print that model without having to download it to their computer. Right. That is the type of thing that we're innovating and doing to make this a consumer level device. First time people in the home, they don't even have to know how to splice a model on their computer. Right. They can just print it right from maker world or wherever. Yeah. Right. And I mean, really, Bamboo Studio was a big jump in slicing. I'm sorry, the plate feature is really nice. Why hasn't any other slicer done this? It's just, it's so simple to add it. Why didn't anybody else do it? But it, it makes that integration a lot easier. And you know, it, it's interesting is, is um, you know, where we you know, started from with the slicer and putting it yep. into Bamboo Slicer, Bamboo Studio, you know, hey, Bruce is like, we stole our slicer. Well, it's open source, but at the same time, you know, we get accused of taking more than we give. All that is in there. They could take that back themselves and put it into Crystal Slicer. They could, and they have done some things like the step file import. Uh, they, they, yes, they have definitely done a few things. Yeah. And hats off to them for actually, you know, hey, they're doing it. We can take it. We can take some stuff from theirs. And um, that's how open source works too. It is. It, it's, it's okay. Yes. It as long as you properly attribute, that's and, how open source works. And yes. We did that from the moment it became public. We posted the source as soon as it became public. There was that little hoopla about how some of the early um, YouTubers got a version of it. There's always drama. Uh, there's always oh, drama. Did you, did you like that new blog post about the uh, the whole Maker World thing? Did you see it? I did. The drama and what we did and didn't do? I, yep. How'd you like that title? I like the title. I wrote the title. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. 
So I, I will be covering that at some point. I don't know when, but we will be covering that blog post at some point. I might just put into a, a print fix Friday video or something because I don't want to make a full video on it. But I, I, I think there's some, a li some things I would like to discuss there. But Will, I do really like this machine. It looks good. It's pretty. I don't like that it poops on the table. It's kind of weird. I, uh, yeah. But a filament box well, seems okay, to fit on I, there just I have, fine. I have a filament box there. Yeah. I did. Yes, you need something to catch the poop on this, just like you do on our other ones. Yep. And actually, there might be a hair more poop on this one because we have new flow calculations right in the he print head. Nice. Okay. It actually will flow uh, at the beginning of the print, it'll purge a little bit extra while it's purging. That's the equivalent of what the LiDAR did before on the print bed. Got it. Got it. It is actually getting a flow rate and calculating it, and it's doing it throughout the whole print. Nice. So one of the things is it can adjust on the fly. If your filament's a little cheap, <laughs> that can, it'll adjust all the fly. Change. That's nice to see. And so, um, and as far as I can tell, that might also help with multicolor prints that yeah. have different filaments. So we'll see. But uh, so far, the results have been good from it, and I'm liking that better than the lidar skin. So. Awesome. Well, Will, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for showing off the mini and A1 mini and talking all about bamboo. I appreciate it. See, we don't have to always agree on things to get together, hang out, and be friends. Absolutely. You know? Ah, Future Grant here. You thought we were ending the video. Nope. I wanted to tell you guys, there is so much more behind the scenes footage from Bamboo. We have over 20 minutes of raw footage here with what, a little over 11 minutes of edited down content for you guys on this talk. It was awesome to finally get to meet Will and see the A1 in person. You know, if you wanna see that behind the scenes footage, we are gonna be doing a massive release of the behind the scenes footage, the interviews and everything that we've done throughout the East Coast Rep Rap Festival and 3D Printopia 2023. Here coming very soon, those will be only available to channel supporters, whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier. And I remember if you wanna support what we do here on the channel, you can do so via those links in the description down below and get access to behind the scenes content that, uh, you know, you don't get to see anywhere else. And at the $10 Jane Hire, you get to come hang out with myself and the entire 3D Musketeers crew in our private Discord server where we've been editing this video. This is a future grant that's happening the day before this goes live. It's pretty cool how this works sometimes. But that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. See you in those comments. This one's going to be a fun one. Take care. I, I do have another X1 carbon. You know that, right? Yeah. I was sent one by a fan. No, I, I wasn't aware of that. And it works? No, it caught fire. They sent it to me because it caught fire. It wasn't, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, still, it's, it's been in the box since I got it. Context.